Hello, today I'm going to do a video on the new Samsung S21 Ultra and I've just got this phone because I've been due an upgrade on my contract and I will compare it to the iPhone 12 Pro and the Sony A7R 3 with a G Master lens and I'll be looking at the image quality, some photogrammetry results and I'll be showing you some renders in Unreal Engine. It's not really a versus at this stage because I think we've established that the phone sensors just fall behind what you can do with the camera and I'll explain some of the reasons behind that today. Very quickly a little bit about the Samsung S21 first of all the price it's been widely touted as being cheaper but i pay more because it's gone up 23 pounds since my last contract and they're pushing more data which i just don't use standard only may be cheaper but on contract it sure feels more expensive to me it's been touted with some pretty high-end specs like 8k video and 100 megapixel image i tested 100 megapixel image and it was pretty much useless for photogrammetry and the 8k video is very very noisy and uh, soft in parts and when you compare it to the 4k on a 1080 screen it's, it's just it's not useful at all the cpu i'm using the eu model which doesn't have the snapdragon uh, in terms of graphics the snapdragon takes it in the benchmarks that i've seen and my model's got 12 gigabytes ram and no sd card which is a uh, not good for me because i got the 128 gigabyte models paying a bit less and no t uh, time of flight sensor that's been dropped from the previous model although that wasn't much use anyway and no headphone slot the 120 hertz screen is incredible very very fast the phone in general is very 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 quick and the battery life seems to be great I took lots and lots of shots and used very little battery maybe about 20% battery being outside for a fair bit of time in terms of what I'm scanning I'm scanning this wonderful anatomy model and a bit of a warning there's some nudity here the model itself is from 3dtotal.com an excellent website that gives some profits to charity the figure itself was a little bit glossy so I used this dry shampoo which is hideous stuff but it provided me with some texture that was quite useful in the end and it was very cheap compared to professional matting spray so to the photography, the native camera app itself it did have some various modes, but they provide too much artificial color, colorization, and I didn't tend to use these at all. They might be useful if you're into social media or you just don't want to use software to process your images, but for photogrammetry, not useful. So the lenses themselves, you get the four lenses on the front, and the it's got a laser autofocus which i found to be too sharp and snappy a bit like one of the early sony's or something but hopefully there'll be some software updates to fix that but it got in the way quite a lot for my purposes uh, i used the standard lens for pretty much everything and i had a wandering gimbal here which i didn't use in the end um, and i didn't use these shots either but i i got to work with some of the zoom here and the 10 time zoom and the free time zoom and looked at some of the detail on here which came out very well but anything above that really you're entering software zoom there and it's very noisy and I think most of it's artificial sharpening so I wouldn't have used that for photogrammetry or really anything because you'd need a very steady hand or a tripod to get anything proper out of it in terms of the uh, pro mode which I used for everything uh, I'm not a pro I'm just a tinkerer but some great suggestions about using some uh, pro applications and the pro mode with this only allows you to use two lenses which is a bit disappointing but um, I managed to use the main lens for everything pretty much and it allows you for manual white balance adjustment which is good and allowed me to set some white balance for my outdoor conditions which I kept consistent. The fixed aperture makes it very hard to focus to so the 1.8 aperture so I had to try to get the whole figure in, focus and fill the frame which is ideal for photogrammetry but an object of 29 centimeters it's, it's literally impossible to do that. The manual ISO and shutter speed was great. I set it as low as I could for outside and a high shutter speed with a tripod and kept that consistent and I didn't use these particular images but uh, the timer function was great and you can see here some light coming in through my images which wasn't so great but I um, did manage to get a relatively good result in the end on the iPhone side I use an application called Halide again thank you for the comments I checked uh, it out uh, according to what you guys said and I found the application to be good it, it captures DNG RAWs as well which allow you a bit more scope for retouching in dark table or Lightroom or something like that and um, the downside to that was I couldn't get the timer to work whenever I was using Halide but it seems to be relatively well laid out and I didn't use the native application for my shots in this instance. So first off we see the Samsung S21 with the standard um, lens here and an idea of the sort of detail we get even out of the pro mode which which I did had all the contrast and all the color adjustments turned off here it seems to be a very vibrant shot I don't know how much of that is software a lot of the reviews are saying there's 
um, software sharpening and stuff going on here. And this is some of the problems with this character here. We can see that this arm is blurred out, for example, whenever I shoot it at this range because of the aperture. I'll show you the an example of shooting it from an angle. You can see the bottom half of the subject is largely out of focus and I could have I did take some examples with passes uh, of the bits that were out of focus as well and compared many of the results in in MetaShape the photogrammetry application to see what kind of result I get and this is the iPhone 12 Pro and again ignore the really bad spray job I've done here it actually worked in my benefit because the Sony picks up some of the dust and some of the flakes of dry shampoo that it attached to my character later on so it was quite good because there's not a lot of micro detail on this model in its native form and again what's interesting here is the iPhone does a better job of keeping that hand in focus there's not a lot between the apertures on the two cameras very very similar and there's the iPhone from above as you can see the legs and feet out of focus but a little more in focus in the Samsung one of the negatives out of the S21 Ultra was that the focus was quite hard to get sometimes and in comparison this is the Sony A7 R3 which is giving us heaps of micro detail there and even in some of the bits that there isn't much going on in the actual geometry some of these speckles helped to align the geometry and I didn't actually use these ones for the final shot because it was a bit of light change I had forgotten to turn off the um, white balance amateur mistake so I did use a different set of shots for the photogrammetry but you can see on the side here it's keeping things in focus I used a very narrow f16 aperture on the lens I was using and so over to MetaShape here, I'm using MetaShape 1.7, which had some great speed um, advantages over the last version. Everything was so quick. This is the S21 with 63 cameras, which wasn't enough. But in my previous videos, you'd seen that I probably took too many shots in one pass. I've got multiple passes here. And the, the texture obviously looks great. Um, but once we get into the mesh, you can see that the overexposed areas, which I didn't do anything about, which I should have, I probably should have flicked some black paint or something on this to get some more alignment. But you can see that from the back, there is areas here that became distorted and noisy, which probably isn't, I, I do like ZBrush, I'm not going to lie, I love retouching these models, but if you were going to do any proper professional photogrammetry, this certainly wouldn't have been good enough. And you can see the areas that were consistently noisy is the half of the model that didn't have much change in the actual physical structure. With the 163 cameras, I did a lot more. And the terms in terms of speed difference here, there's probably only about half an hour between these, just over an hour for the 163 cameras and about half an hour for the 63 cameras. And you can see some of the noise there is gone because I took some shots from the bottom and from the top as well to eliminate that and this probably would have been good enough with a little bit of retouching in um, ZBrush or Blender afterwards and I didn't mask any of the images I did try some shots with masked images but all it really did was just remove some of the mesh uh, between the legs and I wasn't focusing too much on the feet here because I wanted to remove the base afterwards so that wasn't of much relevance to me um, and then switching over to the iPhone here with 68 cameras similar to what we were getting out of the Samsung. Again, you can see the noise coming in on the same areas here, the tops of the shoulders and the back of the head, which you will see here in the shaded mesh. And again, the feet didn't come out too well because of the aperture issues that I was talking about earlier. And I didn't end up processing or showing any examples of the ones where I did some extra shots of the legs. So you can see here that uh, the, the detail at the front is good, probably even a little bit better than the Samsung. But again, it's, it's, it's difficult to do a versus. Although the shots were taken at the same time and with the same lighting conditions, I couldn't have taken exactly the same shots. And there was a Magic One masking tool, which I did do some examples with masks, but there wasn't a great deal of difference in terms of the geometry itself. Um, so what I show you here now is the Sony A7R free, which I did with just one pass initially, uh, which again was very quick, 59 minutes on my RTX 2080 Super on a laptop, 
which uh, is incredible really considering they're 42 megapixel shots the texture looks amazing with the um, geometry no noise at all there and really picking up some of those um, flakes of dry shampoo that I had and some of the fractures that you can see on the defective model that I had there which is which the phones didn't get at all and this was good for baking normal maps later on and trying to get some of that detail down onto a lower resolution mesh again I got a variety of meshes here that I'd re-imported I did a retopology in ZBrush which I'll talk about in another video perhaps and um, baked some normal maps and some diffuse maps and so forth onto this model which for some reason aren't showing up here but I will show some of this stuff in a future video but still um, a great result and the final result is with 81 cameras with the Sony a7R 3 which covered all of the model and in the previous one you would have seen some errors on top of the head which I again would like to fix that kind of stuff in ZBrush but here we don't see that and we see even more detail uh, the processing time on this I had to run on high because I ran out of memory I'm only using 32 gig of RAM so I couldn't do this on the ultra high but again this was about two hours uh, which uh, compared to previous versions of MetaShip is excellent as far as I'm concerned I'm sure those with RTX uh, 2080 Ti's and 30 series are probably going to get better but um, if we zoom in here really not that noisy at all lots and lots of my um, speckles coming in here in the detail and the side of the geometry there we can see on the leg there the fracture along it and no real noise again I didn't I did do some with masking and it did fix some of the uh, extra mesh that was there between the legs and stuff but again I like to fix that up in ZBrush people probably say why don't you take more photographs and do less ZBrush but with this particular model and what I was looking for that was sufficient so some of the ZBrush retouching here and some of the areas you really don't want to have to retouch on a model but I wanted to rig this and I needed to remove the arms a little bit from the main mesh and stuff so here's the example of the Sony a7R 341 images model brought into Unreal uh, using Touch Designer and Touch OSC on my old Android to automate the, the lighting uh, to rotate that 360 degrees with some sliders and to also rotate the character 360 degrees with another slider and using the first person character I was getting probably between 30 to 40 frames with this and the scene is the Weta um, Meerkat scene which is excellent, I just tweaked it a little bit My final thoughts on the Samsung S21 Plus it just doesn't do enough to justify the price tag I feel Samsung were in a rush to get this out and I feel they just omitted too many things that were useful in terms of the laser autofocus it seemed to get in the way for me a little bit and the Pro app only had two cameras as you can see against the iPhone they both seem to be fairly similar the iPhone tended to be a little bit more in focus with some of the shots but in terms of the photogrammetry result they were similar and I would always favor an SLR with a decent lens even an older SLR with some good optics to get the best result certainly if you want to shoot something very fast and process very fast with 12 megapixel images mobile phones still have their use but overall I would always suggest going with a good camera taking your time taking good shots with a high narrow aperture well I feel like the versus thing has kind of come to an end now and I'm going to start focusing on other stuff like blender on rails that brush remeshing all that kind of stuff so if you still want to see any videos even on phone comparisons or anything please let me know and subscribe and thanks for watching